geometry by trade, and if you ask some mathematician what is geometry, you'll probably see an answer like this. Geometry is the study of spaces. But then if you actually go to read geometry papers, you'll see this is somewhat of a lie many times. We don't actually study spaces. Usually we study something much easier. We study linear data attached to spaces, because spaces are just way too hard. So maybe the first example that you see of this is a vector bundle. So just to remind you, a vector bundle is an assignment to each point of a space <coughs> of a vector space so that this whole thing again forms a space. So for example, you could just take the Cartesian product of your space x, the, circle in, the black circle in this example, and a one-dimensional vector space, for example. That would be a vector bundle. But in general, they can be twisted in some way, like on the right or something like that. Uh, to give one more definition, uh, a section of a vector bundle is an assignment of a vector in that vector space to each point of your, uh, of your space. And I'll write gamma of E for the set of all sections of a vector bundle. So for example, if I have the trivial bundle that is just uh, the space X times a one-dimensional vector space, then sections well, are just assignments of a number to each point, so that's just a function. Uh, but in general, again, that can be twisted in all, all kinds of ways. Uh, maybe the most fundamental example of a vector bundle is the tangent bundle that assigns to each point the tangent space at that point. And we might think of sections of that as well assigning to each point a direction. And we can think of a direction as uh, assigning a way to differentiate, to differentiate in this direction. So we think of sections of the tangent bundles as differential differential operators. So you know, if we have coordinates, we can just write them in the usual way. All right. Uh, sorry. So you know, I told you that sections are generalization of functions. So if you go to college, the first thing you do with functions is you learn how to differentiate them. So can you differentiate sections in the same way? And well, the answer is yes, but you need some additional data. And that additional data is called a connection. So a connection. It's essentially just a function that takes in a differential operator, so a section of the tangent bundle, and a section of your vector bundle, and spits out another section of a vector bundle, satisfying some obvious axioms that you need to satisfy to be called differentiation in any way. Uh, so for example, again, if you take the trivial bundle, you can take the trivial differential. So your trivial bundle has sections, functions. You can just take a differential operator and a function, and you apply one to the other, you'll get a function back. So that is a connection. Uh, but you can get much, much more uh, examples. So if, for, if you take your space, for example, to be just the punctured complex plane, and again you take the trivial bundle over that, then you can get lots of twisted uh, connections. So you take your usual differentiation, and then you add the term lambda f over z for any lambda, for any fixed lambda, and you get a new twisted connection. So there are lots and lots of these things, and if there are lots and lots of some things, then what do we want to do? We want to classify them. Uh, so how do we do that? Well, for that we need one more definition, and that is a flat section. A flat section is just something that get, gets killed by all differential operators. So if I apply any uh, differential operator to that section, under that connection it will go to zero. So in the example on the left of just the functions and the trivial uh, connection, that will be just constant functions. Constant functions are exactly those functions that get killed by all, connection, uh, by all differential operators. On the right, again, you have to compute what the flat sections is. You have to solve some kind of differential equation. So you set that equal to 0. Uh, that's not exactly a very hard one. You see that uh, solutions will be c times z to the minus lambda. But of course, that's only defined locally. That's not defined on all of c star. That is really only defined locally. So you can't have a global solution. You will have lots of local solutions. And we'll come back to that in a minute. OK, how does that help us? Well, there's a theorem uh, that basically says that connections uh, can be uniquely recovered from the uh, sections. That's essentially, it's just solving differential equations that are unique. Uh, there's a condition here, integrable, that just tells you that if you apply a differential operator and then another differential operator and you do it in a different order, you get a sensible result back. So let's do that in our example that I just had, that connection on the punctured disk. Uh, we <coughs> had these local solutions. So what we can do, we start at some point, and then we can walk around the circle. So we have our solution somewhere, and then we can 
continue to extend it and we'll come eventually come back. But when we go around the circle, we won't come back to the same thing. We'll come back to the same thing multiplied by e to the minus 2 pi a lambda. So there's something that's happening if we walk around non-trivial loops. And it turns out that is all the important information. So that's essentially all the information that is in a connection, uh, which gives us to a much more correct statement of what's called the Riemann-Hilbert correspondence, is that integrable con connections are just representations of the fundamental group. So let me remind you, the fundamental group is just all uh, the group of all loops that are not contractible, so anything that goes around some uh, holes or whatever in the space. And the representation is just an action of that on some fixed vector space. All right, great. The right-hand side is somehow, at least for an algebra, is maybe much more understandable than the left-hand side, so we are happy. Let me get to another point theme in geometry, is that we really like compact spaces. We don't like non-compact spaces. We like compact spaces because in many ways they behave much, much better. But we live in some reality where most things aren't compact, so for example, the C star that we just had is not compact. So what we do, well, we make it compact. So for example, if we have C star, we might think not think of C star by itself. We might think of projective line that is compact. And remember that there are two special points, zero and infinity, that we have to uh, remove to get back to our original C star. And there is a branch of geometry that systematically deals with these kinds of things, and that's called logarithmic geometry. So where a logarithmic space is essentially just a space where you mark some fixed boundary subspace, some closed subspace of co-dimension one uh, that you see as a boundary. And logarithmic geometry then just systematically keeps track of these things. And there's a whole big book about it and everything. And well, what do you have to do when you want to consider something on the space? Well, you have to always take the boundary into account. So for connections, the right thing turns out to be that you have to allow your connections to have poles along the boundary. And there's a very nice way to think about that is by introducing the log tangent bundle, which is some kind of vector bundle that I'm not going to define now. But its sections are differential operators that vanish along the boundary. Tangent what did I say? Tangent. Differential operators vanishing around. Okay. Uh, did I? The vector fields are tangent to the bound. The vector fields are tangent. Yeah. Yes. The right is well. I might have said something wrong. Okay. Sorry. So, but let's just think about a concrete example here uh, where you can just write it down. So, in, if you just take. That might have been oversimplifying things the wrong way. Sorry for that. Uh, if you take the complex plane and mark zero, then well, what you get is these, uh, the sections of your log cotangent. A uh, log tangent. I, I try to say cotangent all the time. Sorry for that too. Uh, anyway, and then you define a log connection as just the same way you define a connection. Just you take log differential operators instead of differential operators. For example, if you take the plane and the trivial vector bundle on the plane and you mark zero as a special point, then you can write lots of them like this. So it's very similar to the formula I wrote before, except you multiply everything by the coordinate set. And the obvious question is, uh, if you can classify connections, can you classify log connections in the same way and if you think about this for a minute, you'll run quick, pretty quickly into two problems. A, C, so the plane, there's no holes or anything. So this has, fundament uh, has trivial fundamental group. So you can't get any interesting representation of the fundamental group. And second, well, if you set that equal to 0 here and solve this, you solve the same, exactly the same differential equation as before, get the same solutions, except uh, at zero, you won't get any solutions because c to the minus lambda is not defined around zero. More to do, you do what you like to do in mathematics. You define your way out of it. You define some new space that's called the Katonakayama space, uh, which is essentially just adding, forcibly adding holes into your space along the boundary or 
maybe blowing up the boundary. So instead of having C with one marked point, you put a whole circle into that point. So you take a, what you might call a real blow up of that point. So you forcibly add circles to have uh, loops around. And then, well, the slogan here is that the Katonakayama space is the correct topological incarnation of log geometry. So anything that you might want to record topologically about your log space, you should record on the Katonakayama space. So log connections should be classified as representations of the fundamental group of the Katonakayama space of your space. And that is more or less correct. So uh, I know. Uh, yeah, for the experts, let me just point out two additional issues that you might have here. So the first thing is all these connections I gave you, depending on lambda, are different, while monodromy around any circle can only record lambda mod z. So you need to add a bit of additional data. And second, while normal connections are automatically vector bundles, even if you start with coherent sheaves, log connections aren't. So you should really be thinking about coherent sheaves. You also have to record some additional information. And you get to a statement like this, where you have to add some kind of generalize what you mean by local systems. Uh, but uh, the takeaway here is that really the Katonakayama space is the right thing to represent your, your topological information. And it's more or less representation of the fundamental group of the Katonakayama space, plus a bit of additional data that you need. All right, so we did connections, we did log connections. But if you work with these for a while, uh, you will quickly find out that connections are not quite general enough. So you often want to have something that's just concentrated on a subspace, and that wouldn't be a vector bundle, so it can't be a connection. So you get something that's now a classical theory of D modules, which is just more general things on which differential operators act. I won't give you the correct definitions because I'm running out of time here. But you then get a very similar classification theorem that's also often called Riemann-Hilbert correspondence. That means D modules with some adjectives in front of them are the same as constructible sheaves. And constructible sheaves are just a fancy way of saying you cut your space into pieces and you take a representation of the uh, fundamental group of each of that piece plus some additional data how everything <coughs> fits together. All right, so that's all classical theory. So now we have connections, we have log connections, we have D modules. So the obvious question is, what happens with log D modules? So can I take this slide and just write log in front of everything and still get something correct? And I thought, so I needed these things for a different project. And I thought that would be uh, you know, a short project. I take the classical proofs and write log in front of everything, publish a paper, and be done with that. It turned out I was wrong. So I still believe that this statement is correct, but log D modules behave much, much, not, well, maybe not much, much, but don't, don't behave as nicely as D modules do. So that is something I've been working on for a bit now, and I probably will be continue working on for a bit uh, to try to make this conjecture A precise and B proof it. And yeah, that's, I guess, most of what I will be doing well, this year. <laughs>